today on an all-new Dr. Phil. Melanie gets violent and crazy. Do not touch me. She claims her daughter's delusion. I found out that I was a prophet. But his mom. They tell me you have been the most mean and rude guest at the show. Pushing her over the edge. This was supposed to be me. And this uh, is supposed and to be what I feel is necessary to get your daughter help. And if that's not what you want, I'm happy to excuse you. Let's do it. Is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by, Dr. Bill. I try to be an emotional compass and point you in the right direction. In five, four. I am not giving up on you. Go, Dr. Bill. received this letter from my guest Dana who wrote to me dear dr. Phil please help my daughter who was once normal took a pill in 2009 and has been out of her mind since I enabled her and spoiled her out of guilt because her biological father wanted nothing to do with her my husband and I are at our wits end there have been nights where we all sleep in one room with the door locked so that she can't hurt us. I need help. I am lost. But Dana didn't stop there. She also sent me some home video she captured of her daughter's behavior. Take a look. Please, so I could call someone. I'm on help the phone. Me. Put the things off the hook. I'm on the phone. I'm on the phone. I'm on the phone. You're a psycho. I'm doing this for my own you protection. You really are. Around she the told house. me. Do you know what she told me? Mel Melanie, you know do not she touch told me. me. Melanie, told do me not to touch me. I will call the police if you touch me. So call them so I can leave this family. Call them. This is such a great family. Dr. Phil, do you want to see this? This is what she is. It's psycho. Well, I saw this video and I told my producers to book this story and get these guys out here right away. Now, you would think that this desperate mom's reaction would be to say, oh my God, thank you. You would think she would do everything necessary to help us prepare to help them, to prepare for the show. You would not believe the drama that my dedicated staff has gone through getting her here to Los Angeles just to talk to me. Now, my staff says she has been demanding, pushy, rude. One day she says, I'm coming. The next day she's out. She wanted this guest to come and not that guest. And then on and on. We discovered that Dana is just as much of the problem as her daughter seems to be, although it's mom that's doing the complaining. And so part of this show is going to be me going through a very special list I put together just last night of her mother's behavior leading up to right now. For example, Nick, our producer, very dedicated, bright young man, has been killing himself for these people. This morning, she refused to even meet him after all the work that he has done to get them here. Unbelievable. Now before we meet her, let's hear what her complaints are about her daughter. When Melanie started high school, she started hanging around with the wrong crowd. Melanie started smoking marijuana and drinking. When I was in high school, I was smoking like four joints a day. I was high most of the time. I spoke to her about drugs and the dangers of it, but I kept thinking in my head, well, she's experimenting, she's not giving us any problems, she's doing good in school. I thought she was going through just a phase. I never really got in trouble for it. They just thought it was like a part of growing up. Melanie began to use hard drugs. Things began to spiral out of control. She couldn't stay in school. My motivation went downhill. Five years ago, when Melanie was 17, she took ecstasy. I felt, yeah, awesome. I saw shining lights all the time, like paparazzi. I felt as if I was a celebrity, really. Because of the drugs, she has never been the same, and I believe she lost her mind. 
Well, from there, it got worse. Dana says Melanie ended up in the psych ward on five different occasions. Melanie was talking about Michael Jackson. Do you not get it now? I don't know what you mean. I was like, what? She was saying all these weird things. I felt like I had psychic abilities. It was really scary. She was rambling on about Martians, the government following us. And I kept saying to her, Melanie, what did you do? What did you do? We found her digging up dirt in the yard, telling us Whitney Houston told her that there was a ball hidden in our yard. Michael Jackson was telling me to look at the stars, to try to find the satellite in the sky. Michael Jackson was telling her our family dog was possessed and that she needed to kill the family dog. I brought her to the hospital. They admitted her into the psych ward. They can't figure out what's wrong. The doctors have said that she has drug-induced psychosis. You cannot do drugs. This is what happens if you do drugs. Since that experience, I continue to do drugs. I just haven't been the same person. Melanie gets violent and crazy. She has been in the psych ward five times. Melanie has said she wanted to kill me. I'm at my wit's end with Melanie. I can't do it anymore. Okay, Dana, you, you say at your wit's end, what do you think you need to do at this point? I don't know what I need to do at this point. That's so why I'm here. So you're lost. I'm lost. I, I'm desperate enough to air this on television. Do you think we, I know what I'm doing? I think you do. I've been watching you for 13 years. Yeah. And 10 years ago, I would have said, are these people crazy airing their dirty laundry out in public? <laughs> but then it happens to your own. Do you think I know what I'm doing? I do. I do think you know what you're doing. Because I think I know what I'm doing. And if you've been watching for 13 years, you know that I also have an incredibly distinguished advisory board here made up of the top minds in psychology, psychiatry, uh -huh. medicine, sociology. I know where this is going too because no, of 13 years. No, I mean they come from the top learning centers from around the country. And I've, I've sent a lot of this history out and, and we've vetted it and begin to formulate uh, some plans. And um, I, I assume you, you do know where this is going because my question is, if you think I know what I'm doing, then why have you been so busy trying to tell me how to do it? I did not want this show to turn into something that I did not write about. I did not want to come out here and turn it into the poor kid who had these abandonment issues, because she did not. Melanie grew up in a great home. She grew up with love. She grew up with support. So you really don't think I know what I'm doing. You think you need to tell me what to do? No, I don't think so. And if and let's just decide that, that that's true, that let's say that she doesn't have abandonment issues. And, and frankly, I, I don't think that's a trigger for her behavior, actually. Right. Uh, I've never thought it was a trigger for her behavior. But I do look at both nature and nurture. And so... I look at what kind of relationship interaction pattern you have with her, and I look at how you conduct yourself. And do you think you have conducted yourself appropriately with my staff? Yes, I do. Do you? Because they tell me that you have been the most aggressive, mean, manipulative, and rude guest they've had in their entire career at the Dr. Phil Show. I don't feel that way at all. This was supposed to be me and her. So this and, is supposed to be what I feel is necessary to get your daughter help. And if that's not what you want to do, then I'm happy to excuse you. And later, on one occasion, you were found roaming barefoot through the town, right? In the streets. What, what was going on then? Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. Have you tried to lose weight and failed? Call 
dropped. <laughs> Did you two miss your connecting flight to the show? We saw a Spank store, Panda Express, and we saw a bar, and that's the big girl trifecta. <laughs> Ready for your old body back? You refuse to even meet the producer that has mm -hmm. worked his butt off. He has stayed up till 2 and Do 3 you know o'clock in the morning. He lied right to me. He yeah. lied to me, and I found out on Facebook. Nick, come out here, please, if you would. Just, just come out and join us here. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, uh, this man that you want to meet, this is Nick Thorson here. Nice to meet you. Uh, that's been working so hard, and his entire team... Um, uh, on your story, and um, he's not a liar. Nick, no, uh, we, did you lie to me? Absolutely not. Nick, not lie to Dana. you told me Melvin will not be part of the show. Right. You're here, and she's not. He's not going to be there, and he's not going to come. I have emails. Mm -hmm. I have recordings. And I have you, everything that you said. Of course. Let me explain exactly what happened again. You told me. You okay. said that Melanie refused to come right. at the last minute, so you had no choice. Can so I explain? She, she, you said to me. See, this is what happened the entire process. You never let me speak. So okay. let me just tell you what happened. By the way, that's not his decision. It's mine. They know they don't make deals for me. They're not authorized to make deals for me. They cannot make concessions for me. And then he they're, they're not have. authorized to do that. No, he did not. He came to me and asked me if it was all right to exclude this individual from the show. And because I actually don't believe it's an issue or a trigger for the specific behavior we're talking about, I said, that's okay. Uh, I was, uh, that was all right with me. I was willing to do that. He then said, uh, actually, the daughter who is, is with him now... Uh, is just too worrisome to, to travel without him. I said, that's fine, but he's not going to be part of any of this. And, and, and so you may, you may say that, and, and that's I okay. Been fine and with he that. did that with my authorization. And I would have been fine with that. I found out on Facebook because they wrote Hollywood. Nick didn't write that on, didn't write Hollywood. No. What the hell? He doesn't run their Facebook. And then they... And, but let me, let me... But, uh, and okay, then, but and we're going to let Nick speak for a minute here. I'm okay. going to stop talking, and so are you. Okay. Nick? The, the, the reason that, first of all, I never lied to you. We never lied to you. What happened was when Melanie decided she was not going to come unless this person flew with her as support, as she puts mm -hmm. it, once she said that, we said, okay, let's get her here. Right. However, we have to. Right, and we I agree didn't, with We that. didn't lie to you. No, we, didn't, we did not tell you that that person came with because we knew you would flip out over it. We didn't want to cause any drama. That doesn't mean he was a part of the show. That doesn't mean he was on the show. Let me finish, please. But, and but, hold on, no, let no, me finish. No, 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 no. And, so, and so once you asked if he was here, we did not lie to you. We told you, yes, he came. Okay? And the rest of the story is, I said... Out of curiosity, did you do any clips with him? Did you put him through makeup and wardrobe? And you said, yes. Yeah, and which, I said... Which wasn't a lie. I instructed that he be interviewed in the event that I saw something in there that I thought was relevant that needed to be used. And I, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out, are you really wanting to get your daughter help or are you just wanting to create a bunch of drama? No, I wanted to get my daughter help but I did not want this drama. This was supposed to be me and her. So this and, is supposed to be what I feel is necessary to get your daughter help. And if that's not what you want to do, then you should not be here, and I'm happy to excuse you. But we're going to do what I need to do. You're not going to tell me what I need to look at and not look at to help your daughter. I either will not help her, or I will help her the way that makes clinical sense to me. That will not be dictated by you. It will not be dictated by her father. It will not be dictated by her. That's just the way it is. Now, maybe those other doctors didn't tell you that, but I'm going to tell you that. You're not going to tell me what to consider, what not to consider, who to talk to, and who not to talk to. You can tell me you don't want to deal with me, and that's fine. I will put you right back where I found you, which is on your curb. I will fly you back to where and, and put you right back there. And if your daughter wants to talk to me, 
then I will talk to your daughter. If she doesn't want to talk to me, then I will send her on her way as well. But you're not going to dictate to me what I'm going to do to help your daughter because you're not qualified. And if I disagreed about the abandonment issues, then I would tell you that, and I, I guess we'd just have to have a fight over it or we just wouldn't move forward. I just don't happen to disagree with you, so it's never really been an issue. And, no, I, and I don't think you're really so concerned about that. I think you're just embarrassed by this person. You don't want to be seen by him. That's exactly what I said. <clears throat> I said that from the beginning. I yeah. said I am embarrassed of my past of choosing this ignorant person. I am embarrassed that he is still not a productive member of society, and I am. Yeah. And me and my husband have to get up and go to work every day. Yeah. We have to show our faces after this. Yeah. He doesn't. And, yeah. and it's unfortunate. And, and Nick told you that he wouldn't be here, right? Look yes. around. You see him anywhere? No. I believed him at last night. Yeah. But it, I didn't believe him. I believed, because I didn't want to. I believed the other gentleman who, who told me the truth. Yeah. Well. He was. Yeah. Well, I, I, I believe him. You uh, have I, to. I, I believe him. You have to. He's my guy. You know who I he's work with. Guy. I believe in who the people that I work he's with. He's my guy, and uh, I, I stand by him. Uh, he's got your best interest at heart, and th there is not a person in your world that has been working harder for you and your daughter than that guy right there, and you ought to be grateful for it. And the fact that you can't see that and acknowledge that speaks volumes to me. Um, <laughs> It just says, Nick, thank you. Um, so, you know, and our, uh, is everybody on our team perfect and express and phrase everything exactly the right way uh, at one and two in the morning and uh, this back and forth? Of, of course not. Of, of course not. I, I, everybody's human. They're trying to get to the end, which is to get help for people. And I think your behavior has been very unbecoming and it's been very unproductive in getting your daughter help. Um, so that's where we are. Do you want to proceed with this or do you not? Absolutely. Totally up to you. Absolutely, that's why I'm here. I knew you were gonna hammer me. I'm strong enough to have any humiliation. Well, I'm here. You no, know, it's not about humiliation, it's about owning your behavior. I said, you know, Nick's not perfect. I'm not perfect. We're not perfect. Uh -huh. uh, but apparently you are. If I was perfect, I wouldn't be here. Yeah, don't we know it. <laughs> when we come back, we are going to meet Melanie, and hopefully we're going to move on to something that uh, has a positive outcome. We'll be right back. I don't try to pick fights with my mom. I'm not a provoker. Is there a reason you're looking at me and doing those faces? I do not antagonize Melanie. When I think about my mom, I have hate. I have disgust. But I'm just scared. With the problems I've had in my past, I blame my mom. Melanie blames me for everything. Melanie tells me all the time that she had a terrible life. Melanie blames me, but in reality, she needs to blame herself for her own problems. Dana says her daughter Melanie has engaged in disturbing and out-of-control behavior that includes psychotic hallucinations where she claims Michael Jackson told her to dig up the front yard, punching her mother uh, in raging fistfights and troubling drug use that may have altered her mind permanently. Now, Melanie says she hasn't had drug-induced psychosis in at least two years, and her mother Dana just likes to push her buttons and get her to lose her cool and explode. I don't think so. Take a look. 
Melanie causes drama everywhere. Melanie, you know do not touch told me. me. Melanie, told do me not to touch me. She's always causing drama. I don't try to pick fights with my mom. I'm not a provoker. Is there a reason you're looking at me and doing those faces? My mom usually provokes me and keeps following me around the house or not letting me leave. I will call the police if you touch me. So call them so I can leave this family. I do not antagonize Melanie. She definitely starts it. The worst thing my mom ever said to me, she said, do you know what you are while I was packing up my stuff to leave? And she said, you're I have never called Melanie a She has said that to me. She's accused me of it. And I said to her, who is an ignorant person? Nothing to do with you being black. When I think about my mom, I have hate. I have disgust. I'm not a racist. I don't even know what to say about it. It's stupid. But then again, you know, Michael Jackson might have told her it. I mean, really. OK. Um, I'm, I'm glad to meet you. Tell me why you think you're here and what it is you hope to achieve by being here. Um, well, I'm very confused on, um, you know, it's just very hard because I had drug-induced psychosis. Um, I heard people in my head. Um, it was something that's very difficult. You've messed around with drugs at different times in your life, experimenting with them at different times, right? Yes. And what all have you taken? What did you take early on, the first things that you took? Um, marijuana, alcohol, pills, and everything else, really. Have you done cocaine? Uh, yes, I have. Mushrooms? Yes, I have. Um, then ecstasy? Yes. We kind of made a list. Uh, alcohol on a regular basis from 15 till now. Marijuana, regular basis, 15 till now. Pain pills, uh, you did a three-month binge pretty big at age 16, right? Uh, age, yeah, 16, 15, 16, that's when I... Okay, you've done started. ecstasy just five times. But you had a really bad reaction to it the first time, right? It was actually the fourth time. Okay, you, you didn't have a psychotic reaction to it. Um, no, not, not the first few times that I did it. Okay, then you did acid three times when you were 17, and then mushrooms twice when you were 17. I believe so. Okay, and you're 23 now. Yes. Okay. Um, now, then cocaine, heroin, um, and you've, so you've kind of been over the gambit. You've had what you would agree are some psychotic reactions, right? Yes. On one occasion, you were found roaming barefoot, just, you had, you had a dress on, no shoes, just barefoot through the town, right? In the streets. What, what was going on then? Uh, I was hearing someone's voice in my head, um, Michael Jackson. And what was, what was Michael sharing with you? Um, he was saying to me to take off my shoe and feel the earth, to really just get to know the earth. <clears throat> he was dead, though, already, right? He, he was dead, yeah. And you knew he That's was dead. The, yeah, that was the scary part. I want to explain so much, but something tells me not to. I just don't know why this happened to me. Closed captioning provided by... At VisionWorks, making you feel confident in your new look is what we do. At VisionWorks Fashion Frames Clearance, get a complete pair of glasses for $69.95. Plus, 25% off all lens upgrades. Find more than a pair of glasses. Find a better you. Ready? Over time, you've come to realize it's less of a race and more of a journey. So carry on with an AARP Medicare Supplement Insurance Plan insured by United Healthcare Insurance Company. Go long. You've believed that you were a religious prophet. Uh, I found out recently that I was a prophet. You believe that you and a friend were Adam and Eve and had to have sex to save the world. We didn't have sex, but I, I felt that, yeah, yeah. You believed that you had to have sex to save the world and I didn't? literally did. I literally felt that, yes. And didn't do it? <laughs> uh, that was the first time hearing about one. You had a picture of Pope John Paul II, but it had red eyes? 
I found a picture of the Pope, yes, after hearing Michael um, and after walking and feeling the earth and after turning around, um, I found the picture of the Pope. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you ate an apple off the street because a voice said to. I was like, ah, uh, and had to, yeah. You ate the apple? I took a bite of it, yes. Okay. Nicki Minaj, lover. Okay, and you, you heard Michael Jackson say, take your shoes off and feel the earth. You, did he tell you to dig for marijuana in the yard? Um, basically, I had to try to find it. Okay, and what voice told you to move lint and pennies around the room? Um, it was just, the voices weren't constantly there. Mm -hmm. um, and when I say voices, it was Michael Jackson, and then in the background, I heard an audience, a soft audience. And you've heard, you've, you've felt a connection with the Illuminati and the Freemasons, and that Lady Gaga's meat dress had a religious significance? Of course. Mm-hmm. Of course. Uh, I mean, it's scary. Um, I didn't know she even had a meat dress. Uh, <laughs> Um, I, I looked it up when I saw that and saw that she had a <laughs> meat dress at Madison Square Garden or somewhere. The TV wasn't on, but you saw Miley on the television, right? The television was off, and I heard um, Disney, my, uh, Miley, yeah, in the okay. back, her voice. All right. And uh, you believe that Obama is listening to you with a special satellite? That's actually probably true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Well, that could actually, that one actually could be real. Um, evil killer fly tried to attack you. The flies were bugging me. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, well, how do you feel about us talking about these things? That just upset me only because it's a little scary. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. What's, what's scary? Um, you know, I struggle every day. I, I really, I, I took the bill and, and my life has not been the same since. I don't know really what it was, but I'm just scared. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very paranoid. Um, <laughs> um, it's just, um, I want to explain so much, but something tells me not to, mm -hmm. only because, um, who knows, I heard Michael. I, I want you to look at me, I mean, really look at me. Do you sense any judgment in me at all, that I'm judging you in, in some bad way? Not at all. Okay, so you, you've talked about those things that are most difficult to talk about. And you've not been judged about them in any way whatsoever. I and, really hope not. <laughs> and that's, I mean, that's gotta be a plus, right? I mean, yeah. I just don't know why this happened to me, what triggered. We're gonna talk about that, and, and I'm gonna tell you this. Anything we do, I wanna do with you, not to you. You know, we're, we're going to make a decision. Anything that we might do, we'll do together. Okay, and it'll be, it, it'll be what you want to do and not anything you don't want to do. So don't worry about that. There's not going to be any judgment. And there's not going to be any pressure. Okay? Thank you. So we are good with that. All right. See, I can be nice. <laughs> I know. Melanie uh, was adopted by Dana's current husband, Stan, when Melanie was just 12 years old. We're going to find out where their relationship stands now when we come back. Living with Melanie, it was a nightmare. Now I feel he just thinks I don't belong really in the family. Because of Melanie's behavior and abuse, I don't care if I ever see her again. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. They've tried to diet. All drugs. But fail. You say the only running you do are beer runs. Dr. Phil weighs in. Do you believe you can change this? Because you can. That's tomorrow.
When he was little, she and I were very close. I was more her friend than I was her mom. I spoiled Melanie by giving her everything. Dana says her 23-year-old daughter, Melanie, has completely ripped apart their once peaceful family with violent and unpredictable behavior after she took a hit of ecstasy when she was 17. Now, Dana's husband, Stan, who adopted Melanie, says he's glad that psycho is no longer in his house. Melanie was seven when Stan met her for the first time. I never had a father figure in my life. He was a great dad. I loved her as my daughter. Stan adopted Melanie when she was 12 years old, and we both raised her. As Melanie's problems progressed, Stan and Melanie did not get along. Living with Melanie was a nightmare. You're a psycho. I was calling the cops. Now I feel he just thinks I don't belong really in the family. My fuse is short now because of this. Everybody in the family has to suffer. I feel Stan resents me because I've just put them through a lot. Melanie has definitely put a strain on my relationship with Stan. But now we're fighting over this kid who could care less about us. I'm glad the psycho Melanie's not around. Because of Melanie's behavior and abuse, I don't care if I ever see her again. How, how do you feel about his... Position? He loves her. He gets mad. He says things. But he loves her. You know, how, how do you get along with Stan? Um, he, you know, uh, no, nothing really, uh, you know, um, happens <clears throat> really with me and him. He sticks to himself and, you know, he's just like a cool, cool dad. Do, do you believe that taking this ecstasy in 2009 triggered a psychotic episode with you? Um, you know, it's, yeah, of course. Why do you continue to deal with any kind of substances at all? You're continuing to smoke marijuana, you're continuing to drink, uh, whatever you might be doing. If you know that you have what we call an ab reaction, a, a bad reaction to chemical ingestion to, to your brain, why do you continue to take the risk of having another reaction or compounding an existing condition by taking substances that you don't need to take? Um, <clears throat> I love to party. I'm still young. I did hear from a lot of doctors that I'm self-medicating. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess that if I could you know, pinpoint myself, I would say I'm self-medicating. Right. And you said that you haven't had an episode in two years. I felt normal for, I would say, yeah, two years. Um, I haven't really, I don't know. Well, on what happened in Queens on May 23rd? Um, when I was in Queens, uh, I started off in Massachusetts, ended up in New York. I don't really recall um, exactly how far the drive was. I know that when we were in the car, um, you know, we, I had to tell them to pull me, pull over, and um, they pulled over and I felt terrorists were, um, you know, just paranoia when I say it, uncontrollably. Well, that wasn't two years ago. That was just May. a few months ago. That was in May. Um, you were saying you hadn't had an episode in two years. That was May? Okay. It, was May, it was May 23rd. And, yeah, I, I don't know. I just ended up in New York um, and, you and, know... And in you the... weren't around your mom at the time. No. And you say the only time you ever have these is when she pushes you and triggers you, and you haven't had one for two years other than when she pushes you or triggers you. But you had one in May, and she was nowhere in the picture oh. at that time. So and that's, that's important to me. That's diagnostic to me to understand because that tells me that you, you had some type of spontaneous uh, occurrence here. Were you taking drugs at the time? Yeah, I did take a drug. And what were you taking? I took, um, I took a molly, but I don't even know if it was ecstasy that I took. You just said, I took something. I'm not even sure what it was. Somebody just gave me something, pop it in, swallow it. Don't know what I swallowed. Next thing I know, I'm across state lines, and I believe terrorists are everywhere. Well, at that point, I was just, whatever's happening in my brain, I can't get, it can't get worse than this. 
Oh, yes, it can. Yes, it can. It, it can get worse, but the good news is it can get a whole lot better. In almost every one of these situations, we have an ingestion of some type of drug, narcotic, Absolutely. Uh, whatever, and then she has a bad reaction to it that is psychotic in nature as defined by both hallucination and delusion. She's good for a while, and then she goes back out, and she comes home, and she's psychotic again because she did drugs again. We just can't, the first time... Do you time... want to know why she's doing that? Well, I can tell you why she's doing it. Okay. With great specificity, and I'm going to do that after the break. We're going to get very good. ...in the Los Angeles area, and you would like free tickets, go to drphil.com and click Be In The Audience, or you can call 323-461-PHIL. That's 323-461-7445. Here's, here's the deal, and I, I'm going to tell you this as, as best I see it. There is such a thing as, as drug-induced psychosis. That's, okay. that's, not a, that's, that's not a myth. And some people's brains are biochemically balanced in such a way that they can have a, a really... Uh, dramatic reaction to certain chemicals when you take them in. Okay. So I am diagnosed with drug-induced psychosis well, I, because, I mean, I heard that for, for as long as we've been going through this. Even now, I'm still, like, confused on, on just everything. I mean, this is just too much for me. I'm, I'm stressed. Okay. I'm stressed out to the limit. I mean, I can't, I feel like I can't just live my life. I mean, I have, um, I have someone else in my family with drug problems. And I mean, they sure didn't do, you know, half of the things that I have to but, go through. But everybody's different. And let me, let, let me, let me explain this. Let me finish. Okay. Let me explain this. And, and I want you to understand this very clearly because I think right now I think you are confused and it's kind of like listening to two radio stations at the same time two different ones right that's what I was trying to yeah you got right. two stations and they're both playing and talking and it's like you can't really understand either one of them because they're each interfering with the other and so it gets really confusing and right now I said I was gonna be very specific about why she keeps doing this if she knows the effect because nobody's ever giving her given her any alternative coping skills. And so if you get into a certain point where you're bored, down, scared, or whatever, and you've taken a drug at that time, and you don't have anything to do instead, you're, you're going to regress to the norm and take the drug. She needs to learn new ways to deal with that, new skills, new abilities. And I, I do think we're dealing with comorbidity here. I think you do have an addiction problem. I do think you do have a neurological imbalance here. Um, and I do think you have some emotional issues that have spun out from this. So I think you got kind of multiple things going on. And I don't think you're ever going to get better unless you deal with all of those things at one time. And I have some options for you, and I have a, a question for Melanie when we come back. We'll grab it. <laughs> Closed captioning provided by... Don't hide. Hide your cold sore while you treat it. New Carmex... 777. Want to know what's coming up on Dr. Phil? Visit our website and subscribe to our email newsletter. You'll get weekly updates, live strategies, and exclusive video that you won't find anywhere else. Plus, on drphil.com, you can see sneak previews of upcoming shows. Log on today. Okay, the question now becomes what to do. And I, I, I'm going to tell you what I think you need to do and then you can make a decision whether you want to do it and you can discuss it with your mom you can whatever uh this is victoria herbert right here hi victoria hi. This is victoria herbert right here I'm and in. she hi. is from an organization called new directions uh for women and 
Uh, new Directions for Women is exactly what I'm describing. It's a dual diagnosis program. It's, it's a program that says, I'm not going to treat like an addiction. I'm going to treat the whole woman. And it's a beautiful facility down in Costa Mesa, California. And I, I've made arrangements with Victoria and her people there to offer you just as our gift to you for you to have the opportunity to go there and work with these people and have a full and complete evaluation, diagnostic workup to give you the opportunity to get this jumbled wiring in your brain unjumbled. Is it really like that? It is like that. It's very much like that. And I think that's why you feel confused. I think that's why some of your reasoning jumps around. And I think that we need to detox you in a very careful way. I hate hospitals. Well, this isn't a hospital. This isn't a hospital. I hate psych wards. I hate this isn't a psych ward. ward. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah, just. I mean, it, listen, the only no, thing. The only, let me tell I you. I mean, really, it's like. But you're you're running away from something that's never going to go okay, away. Hold on. I, I feel like I, I'm just getting scooted along to wherever anybody wants me. I just feel misunderstood. Well, and. This is an effort to understand you very carefully, biochemically, neurologically, psychologically, sociologically, every possible way to really take the time to understand you and for you to understand yourself. Will you sit down and talk with her? If I have to, sure. No, you don't have to. <laughs> no, you don't have well, to. Well, I'm willing to, sure. Okay, that's good. That's, because you don't have to. But I want you to, I think you will. And, um, and, and Victoria, you, you think you guys can really help her, right? I really do. And Melanie, I do hope you accept this opportunity and this gift. New Directions for Women, like Dr. Phil said, is a beautiful place. But it's a very home-like and safe and loving environment. It's not a hospital. It's going to be a good fit for you. And, and you can be there if she wants you to and, or, or not, just whatever you want to do. But I want to arrange for you all to sit down <laughs> and talk backstage and, and do what you want to do. You, you're running this from this point forward. Do whatever you want to do. Fair enough? Mm-hmm. Okay. Deal? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Good. 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 All right. I want to thank all of my guests today. A special thanks to New Directions for Women. You can learn more about New Directions for Women at newdirectionsforwomen.com which can be found on the resource page at drphil.com. If you want to weigh in on today's show, log on to drphil.com, share your thoughts on our message boards, or use hashtag Dr.